So today is going to be a very um, different from usual sort of video. My grandfather was a little bit of a collector, shall we say, and he has, we're going through uh, his estate and selling off some things so that he could, you know, have a little bit of pocket change. And we, in the lot of, of things from his house, we found, my parents found, three boxes of vintage clothing. Nothing too exciting. And I am going to unbox those and share some of the goodies with you guys. This looks like it was a Christmas box at one point. And I'm not looking in the box yet because I want to show you what's on the lid here. There's just some handwritten cursive, which my dyslexia is having a very hard time with. Jenny's and Exchlin's shoes. Grandma something pants? That's my guess. Whew. This is very exciting. I'm just gonna very carefully move this aside. Oh my. Oh my. Just very gingerly open this up. It's a little moth-eaten, so I'm assuming it's wool. And this looks... This looks like hand binding here on the edge. Let me pull this in close so that you can see this lovely work here. I don't want to unfold this too much. Obviously, because it's very old and fragile, I don't want to be really handling it very much. Actually, I keep saying this is old and fragile, but it it feels pretty sturdy. Like moths have definitely gotten to it and done some things, but it it feels pretty sturdy nonetheless. I have no idea how old that is. I'm not really good at um, closet history. I don't really know how to place things in eras. Ooh, this this has some matching embroidery work. I, I knew the term for this, this raised embroidery work, but I don't know it off the top of my head. Um, this really isn't my forte. Obviously, I, I think this is gorgeous, but I'm out of my wheelhouse as a, an appraiser. Let me just get that nice up and close for you. Ha, ha, ha. And we see more moth holes here, so I think this also has some wool content to it. Okay. So where it said grandma pants, it may have been referring... Oh, this is an apron. This is an apron. We have some nice, good old-fashioned shearing here on the waistband. And I believe this is a silk ribbon. You know, I'm going to actually resituate myself. But for now, I'm just uh, opening it up and seeing what's in here. This one has some staining, as you can see, and there's all kinds of lace up here. I believe we have... Oh, it's like a little... It's a little, like, day dress. Oh, this is precious. This is precious. Oh, well, we have a little dead weevil who wanted to be inside the box there. I'll have to brush him off gingerly. So you see here, it's got these buttons and this marvelous gather in the back and this ruffle all along the bottom and a very, very narrow hem. This is clearly done with a machine with whip stitching here. You can see this is just two selvages that they whip stitched together. Let me get that nice and close. Oh my goodness! Little shoes! These are just adorable. Oh my goodness. 
Those have no reason to be this cute. As I'm moving it, I can see like dust particles flying off of it, and I hope that's not part of the shoe itself. Oh my goodness! The toe has been darned, and the heel has been darned. And they did it the right way. They darned it before any holes popped up. <laughs> darning as protection, not darning as emergency repair. Oh, there is a little hole in the bottom here. Right there. And there's, of course, a second booty as well. There are the two booties. This is a little handkerchief of sorts. This as well is a narrow hem that was done with a machine. Oh, that's interesting. I believe this embroidery here is done by machine as well. I could be wrong, but that looks like machine embroidery to me. So this is some very, very early mass production embroidery, is my guess. Oh, I see a little bit of lace here. Just a little little scrap of lace. That's precious. That is absolutely precious. I think I'm gonna do one box at a time because this, I could really spend some time with this. This feels like silk. It has that like squeak to it when you rub your hands in it and the way that it moves you see like the way that it drapes when you hold it and you let it fall? This has gotta be silk. And this is before the days of polyester, so I can pretty confidently say that this is like 100% silk. <laughs> I've got some lovely hand embroidery here. And this is everything that was in the red box. <laughs> so I'm gonna... I'm going to show you now some close-up shots of everything. Starting with the quote-unquote apron, <laughs> upon further inspection, I think this might actually be a cape. It has this gorgeous piping that was whip-stitched into place, it's not actually sewn in, and this ribbon is just so precious. You can see here where they finished the edge just by cutting it on a diagonal. And all things considered, it held up pretty well. Here at the neckline of the baby cape, we have five lines of gathering, and I figured out that this was bag lined. So it was sewn together the way that you would make a pillowcase, and then the raw edges at the top were folded under and covered by that little silk ribbon. I think that the most impressive thing about this cape is still this embroidery at the bottom. I believe that this is all just satin stitches. I'm not sure how they got that much dimension out of it, though. If anyone is embroidery savvy, please feel free to let me know in the comments. I still think it's so funny that this cording is just whip stitched in place, and you can see here where the stitches are and the places where it's coming undone. I'm kind of thankful to the moths that took little nibbles out of the seams so that I could see the insides and get a little bit of an idea of how this was put together. You can see here where the ribbon is covering the raw edges. It's really rather smart. It's kind of exciting to see all of these little itty bitty stitches everywhere. I don't want to pull this lovely? apart but I also kind of want to pull this apart. This one I believe to be a table runner or maybe a scarf actually, because it has the seam right down the middle and on a table runner, that'd be pretty obvious. What it is, however, is marvelously embroidered. This wool tablecloth is also rather fantastic. All of these little satin stitches along the edging is just ugh, gorgeous. It's just so happy and fuzzy and soft. Incredible. Can you even imagine doing anything this 
evenly and precisely. I mean, every one of these flowers is perfectly identical. The corners are really fun because we have one that's really big and then at the bottom we have this like little skinny corner. Skinny corner. The lace collar was particularly exciting to look at just because of all the little tiny details. I believe this is called tatting, but I am not 100% sure. I do, however, know with certainty that this little leaf in the corner is cute. And speaking of cute, here are the teeny tiny little knitted baby booties. They're just so precious. The brocade silk scarf was really exciting to look at. I'm a huge nerd for weaving. And all of these little tassels that are sewn into place and then tied together like this are so exciting. It's all these little details, you know? They just make me so happy. This one is so tight and even that it looks like machine embroidery, but I don't know that that was a thing yet. And then of course, we have the coolest piece that was in the box, the white dress. This dress is relatively small, I think it's about the size that a preteen girl would wear, and I think that it may have been like a first project, because there's a lot of very odd mistakes, but I'll get to that in a moment. At the very bottom of the dress there is a ruffle, and you can see these gathering stitches that are still left in, they were never unpicked, which I think is kind of fun and there's a teeny tiny narrow hem. There's also a lot of machine stitching on this dress, which makes sense because this is a relatively late Victorian gown. Another thing that struck me is just how much piecing there is. All of the long strips are sewn together, sometimes as close as four inches apart. The gather in the hem is not actually done evenly. See, there's a lot of fullness here in the front, but then, in the back, there's nowhere near as much fullness. So, they were really selective about how they gathered it. This also kind of adds to my young seamstress theory, as well as some of the machine stitches that are just a little bit out of control. A lot of care was taken in the design of the back of the dress. There's two panels in the back section, which gives extra shaping, as well as this glorious gather right here in the back. The collar is really exciting. All of this lace piecing is just incredibly beautiful. But this is also the part of the dress where the most odd mistakes were found. For example, this extra buttonhole. It has no button underneath it, and I'm not quite sure why it's there. There's also a lot of unpicking here. You can see where the collar was originally sewn down. And then there's very deep folds where they've had to fold the collar under so that the dress will still be able to button. And even then, buttoning it is kind of difficult because the collar is in the way. I'm not entirely sure how this was supposed to be sewn together, but something is not quite right. Isn't it comforting to know that the Victorians made mistakes just like us? I'm planning on posting a lot of the dimensions and details of all of these pieces on my blog, as well as eventually making a PDF pattern for all of the extant garments. I won't be size grading them, at least for now, because I want to give you the most accurate representation of how they were sewn together. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you're enjoying this B-roll footage of all the pottery that we got from my grandfather's house. Have a blessed day. Bye, friends!